Lord forgive me for this trap shit. Sergeant Smack making backflip. Telly Hank it with the action. With the Vato speaking Spanish. Frank Matthews, how I vanish. Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut. Gold BBS is on a beamer. When Fat Cat was tearing queens up. Fall off the prop and not the re up. Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus. Uptown like I'm Baby Man. Just caught a touchdown. Let my know with Zero, with bosses, I'm a boss. This is sweetheart, let me tell I don't know how well that you are familiar with me, but there's not an artist in this town that made more money than me besides Will Smith and Eve. The rest of them guys made okay money, but I'm still sitting off my money. I done got money took and got it back. So, and I, and I got the bank account for proven. I mean, if anybody want to put their money up, then that's a whole nother story. But, um, so... For me to get busted like that, and then it was embarrassing for a lot of people. It was embarrassing for my family. It was embarrassing for my aunt Judy, uh, my cousin Dawn. It was very embarrassing, man. Like people don't know what I went through, baby. I was suicidal. You know what I'm saying? It was like I was, I was like, no, I'm not living like this. Then they put me inside a cell. Baby, I live in a crib. My crib is big as shit, like what, uh, 10,000 square feet? I got two feet and ten feet in my backyard. I got every car there that you want to drop. It's cool. I mean, it's like this. We don't even take keys out the car. The car keys just stay in, and we just jump in the car. In the morning time. So imagine, imagine living like that. I'm fucking E. I'm fucking Charlie Watson. I'm fucking all the bad bitches. Foxy Brown. Everybody. I'm fucking all these girls. And imagine that for one day it's all gone. Sources tell us exclusively tonight a well known local rapper has died after being shot while coming out of a Philadelphia bar. Tommy Hill has had run ins with the law before, including a high profile drug trial back in 2004. The former head of the rap group Ram Squad also had ties to ex mob boss Jody Moreno. And you know, I mean, last but not least. I want to thank two people who did a lot for me. One is Joey Molino. And a lot of people say, why do you say Joey Molino? Why do you say this? Why do you say that? Because he was a true friend of me. And he introduced me to some rich motherfucking people that I never, ever in my life would have ever met if it wasn't for that man. So I want to thank you, Joey. I want to make sure if anything I do for any of Nicolette and your little girls, I'll do it. Philadelphia mob boss Joey Merlino was due in a federal courtroom today. The feds accused him of associating with criminals, which is a violation of his probation. Fox 4 and Steve Keeley live outside the federal courthouse in Center City with more on this and what might happen in court today, Steve. Well, that's not going to happen today, that argument. What they're going to argue today is where to have that argument. I know that sounds silly, but that's how uh, uh, the jurisdiction works when it comes to arguing whether the jurisdiction should be here in Philly at this courthouse or down in Florida, where Merlino lives now and where the federal government contends he met with those ex-convicts and felons that he's not supposed to meet with. So not the main issue uh, being decided or even argued here today in Philly, uh, but what is news is that Joey Merlino is back in Philly for the first time since he returned a couple of years ago for his father's funeral. So he's making a life down in Florida right now, wants to open a restaurant and uh, have a legitimate life. And he says he didn't know those felons were in that bar when he went in there himself. So that's going to be the argument eventually. And where they decide to hold this argument is anybody's guess right now. But this will be the first time Joey Molina was in this federal courthouse since he was convicted of several crimes back here in 2000 and eventually did 14 years in prison. Uh, the problem was once you're out of prison and out of the halfway house, you are under supervised release, which is called parole. And during that three years of supervised release, you are ordered not to meet with any bad guys or good fellas and that's what the federal government says he did just days before his supervised release period uh was due to end this summer and strangely after that's over chris and carrie you're allowed to meet and talk and fraternize with anybody you want and so what's arguing uh, uh what's got him so mad here probably uh deep inside is that the federal government's going after him for something that was just uh, they filed their motion just two days before that probation period was going to end so they're really going after him and trying to really get under his skin probably at his side thing that's how the whole snitching thing came about because it was already in the air yeah so they go from joy molino shamsa dean ali this person this person this person this person all the way down to this guy 
And then they had to flip it because I'm a powerful guy. See, it wasn't a lot of guys that sat down with Joey Millie, a black guy, who sat down with Joey Millie, no. Shamsuddin Ali, the Muslims. Um, Mr. Shamsuddin Ali, if you really want to get that straight, because he's a powerful gentleman. He controls all the Muslims in Philadelphia for us being an imam. That's a powerful gentleman. Mm -hmm. Me coming from Richard Allen Projects, I control thousands of wolves. People who will go out and attack on will. People who got money on will. So it's like, it's hard for me to, it's hard for me to uh, point the finger at anybody because I know how much money we got. Mm -hmm. How much money we were making. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and there's no drug dealers out here I can ever, it's on these streets now that I can say even an amount to the money we were making. The guy asked me the day, he said, oh, man, what about all the rooms? And I said, man, personally, you gotta tell me what you be hearing, cause I live on the 34th floor. And it's hard for a room to get on the elevator and come up that high. I don't know, I'm just from a different branch and a different life and a different type of swag and a lot of things. All right, so the shit got so bad, it's like they had to put like a, they own little police station inside Richard Island because there was so many people who was getting killed, so people who was getting murdered that they had to put their own little station inside. And this is the station right here. Yeah, yeah. Which is just when they take you, you get locked down. These was apartment buildings before. Yeah, you know I mean, people used to live here. They done made it out of jail. You know what I'm saying? I love all my niggas. We call it 6 9 I love you to death, boy. I can never not love you. Come on, man. You crazy? You could talk all you want. I love your mom, I love your daughters, I love Marcy, your baby mom. Hey yo, so, so what's up, nigga? I need a story. I came to Richard Allen was like back in like 1985. My mom had got killed, so it was like the only people that I could, the only people, only family that I really had was like people down, down the project. What's up? What's up, Trent? Hey, this is my nigga right here. So from there, you know, we just, let me see that towel, dog. And from there, we just decided to call ourselves Ram. And Tommy Hill grew up here on the mean streets of North Philly. His mother died of a crack overdose. His father was in prison for life. Now, Tommy admits he was a young thug once, but today he is a successful businessman. Hill opened this recording studio and record store in North Philly. Last Thanksgiving, he gave out 500 turkeys to his neighbors. My number one peeve with hip hop artists is that they leave the ghetto and they leave the hood and they never give back. I have to commend him for giving back. I just think that's so fly. But last fall, Hill was forced to shutter his business after gunmen shot up the building. He was forced to go into hiding. While Tommy Hill refuses to identify the people that are after him, KYW has learned through community and law enforcement sources that a violent North Philadelphia drug gang has targeted Hill for death. I'm not scared, but I'm afraid. Why I say I'm afraid? Because when I look at my daughter, and I'm trying to look at my son, man, I don't want them growing up without no, no, without no father. Yeah, I worry, you know, that somebody's gonna sneak him or try to do something, you know, really bad to him. But again, I mean, I'm praying for him. And the last but not least, Epi. Boy, like my pop, took me to a total new level. Show me what it was like to be on him. And you're like Mr. Drummond, so I want to give you that love, uh, man. When I first met Tommy, Tommy was making hustle money, you know? It was funny because I'd see this guy, and this guy was oh, he always had money, but he was he was it was a hustle. It wasn't it wasn't money money. It was hustle money, street money, ones, Since fives, I've known tens. Tommy, I've met a lot of interesting characters. I mean, I've always known interesting characters, but this kid has turned me on to another level of characters. I was out one night. I came home. Maddie and Nelly have these two Puerto Rican girls in this house, and they were having the wildest time of their life. I was laughing so hard that, um, I mean, it was just wild. And every time we see Nelly, Nelly and those guys, that's family. Nelly was on Tommy's first uh, video stuff, and we were on Nelly's first video. And, but it's family. Okay, bankroll, what is okay. it, what is it? Crack house records, PD crack, yeah. TH. 
No Philly, stand up. Shut it out, let's Now no let's Philly get the dirty money. Line cash, live niggas who smoke weed. Stash in the dash, what it's going for? Four and a half to go for three, four. Breaks to go for 25, five. I don't tell lies. It's drop time, drop time. We know that I'ma get mine. Wrapped in plastic, rubber band knots, bitch. Ain't from the hood and I refuse to switch tricks. In the hood, no a nigga been rich cause I take dough. Push cane like an old man, yo. Good brain like a Southwest ho. Best believe my block. Young thugs back locks. Young thugs out the hood in the smash. My thugs take cash. And it ain't hard to go to jail and come back fast. Come back with rocks in the bags of weed in the glass. Dough in the stash. With the hammer on the red dot block. Like ready to pop. Like rock. Welcome to the criminal world. Criminal crime crime. Your man boy Bax, aka Blue, you know what it is. Ram Squad, original underboss, Philadelphia's last underboss, live and direct. Ain't a lot of motherfuckers speculating this, speculating that. They had a lot of shit to say about this, they had a lot of shit to say about that, but I'm about to clear the air. So here's the situation. You know, a couple years back, you know what I'm saying? Sitting in the crib, motherfucker police come running in the crib and shit. Boom, they hit my crib, they raised my crib. I got some coke. Got about 13000 in cash in the crib. They got the search warrant. They say, yo, my foreman brought some coke out of this house. We had a search warrant to search your house. I'm like, man, foreman? What the fuck? What are, you, what are you talking about? I don't serve people out of my house. You know what I'm saying? So they interrogated me and shit. They got me in the tent, my crib, the fuck, the smell of range. You know what I mean? They got my babies crying. You know what I'm saying? They got my wife teared up. At the beginning, I'm telling niggas, yo, listen, do what you gotta do. Lock me up, you know what I'm saying? I don't got no rap, you know what I'm saying? Y'all niggas can, can do this, whatever. Long story short, they put the motherfucking cuffs on my wife. They call DHS, take the kids. They said they gonna take my crib and give it up to the, to the city. Now they like, yo, this your last chance. Who you, you want to get some light up? I said, listen, I don't have nobody to give you. Then they asked me, well, can you give up this guy? It shows me a picture of my partner, Tommy Hill. They said, we want you to, we want you to set him up. I said, well, why should I set him up? Y'all ain't tell me who set me up. Tell me who set me up, and then I might set him up. I only dealt with my circle, my immediate circle. So if, if, it, if it was an informant who informed on me, then he had to actually come from my Colt Ram Squad family. The fact of the matter is, I set Tommy Hill up because I thought he did something to me. You know, I never felt good about it because I wasn't sure that he did anything to me. I was just assuming because a couple of days prior to that, he offered to give me some work, and I just found that a little bit strange. Recently, I found out who actually did, did set me up, and I just want to apologize to him, man, in front of the, you know what I mean, in front of the world, in front of millions, you know. I've always had your back. I still got your back. It just was a fucked up situation, man. And it's real, because a lot of niggas won't do this. A lot of niggas will lie and badger and, and, and hide behind the screens and hide behind the fucking rumors. But we ain't going to do that. We're going to make history with this shit, my nigga. If you listening, come get at your big brother, nigga. You know what I'm saying? We need to talk. I hope you forgive me for what I This think. is like skipping abortion. My situation came due to a guy that was in my cell. Mm -hmm. And he's my cellie. Mm -hmm. And in jail, you and your cellie is the two tightest people because that's like your person. Yeah, yeah. Now, allegedly, allegedly, and I'm saying allegedly real loosely, um, some people I got murdered for cooperating against a few guys that were in prison. Mm -hmm. So when they did that, they start bugging and tapping everybody's cells. Now, now in the federal system, we talk through the toilets. That's how we communicate. 
So if a toilet is bugged, and I'm saying, yo, what up, this and that, this and that, and we kicking it, they got that all on tape. So what happened was my celly had some issues with his DA. He wanted to murder his DA, he wanted to do this, and they didn't mind him talking about that. Mm -hmm. But one day he's mentioned that his cousin followed the DA from the courthouse on a break and went across the street where the DA actually eat lunch. Mm -hmm. That was enough. See, you can talk about it, but you can't act it. So when they came into our cells, they wanted to re they wanted me so bad anyway. So now they're trying to recharge me with attempted murder on this DA because allegedly what happened with Kabani and my whole family got murdered and a police officer um, what, uh, um, allegedly allegedly in a Kabani Savage situation it was like they said that he allegedly burned the house down. Now there was kids in that house and it was um, a lady who worked as a CO at, at um, a state road. Mm -hmm. So that they was heated. The mm -hmm. FBI came to me with this guy named Kevin Lewis, man. He came to me with tears in his eyes, man. He said, I'm going to get every last one of you bitches who did that to that family. And I had to make it clear, I don't know them guys. I have nothing to do with them guys. And I didn't want no parts of that. Mm -hmm. Then when the situation came up with the DA, they was like ready to make me an example because they couldn't catch him or catch whoever who did that to them people. Mm -hmm. Baby, I'm smarter than that. And that's when I understood. They was trying to make it like the United States of America versus me. Okay? How does that make you feel? That that that's that's a bad position you want to be in. You go ask um Osama bin Laden or you go I ask, wasn't taking that, sweetie. So what I did was I went in that courtroom and I had to separate myself from that gentleman. Mm -hmm. And it was like, play the tape. That was him speaking right there. That was me speaking right there. But people took that and said, Oh, I snatched on my selling. But my thing is like, hey man, I'm a man, dog. I'm, I'm not going to go down and do 20, 30 years because it's a conspiracy against people who murdering witnesses and murdering people. The feds wasn't going for that. They was talking about lethal injection. But this is not even my brother. This is not my, this is not my, no. I'm like, no, that, that, what's the, and to be real with you, where I come from, and it's being real, you don't even allow that to go on a person who didn't say it. You take the case. Exactly. Like he should he was supposed to, he was supposed to be a man and say, yo, this is my situation. He had nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. But he didn't do that. Right. He thinking I'm gonna sit there and go back now. I mean Sweetie, if you're my woman and the police come in my house and they bust us with drugs, I say that's mine. I don't let you get locked up with me. You know what I'm saying? As a man, dog, like, like as a man. And if you decide to say, look, well, I'm cooperating, I can't be mad at you. That wasn't your drug. And, and that wasn't my situation. Still investigating Friday night shooting. It happened outside Ruben's Mark Bar in the city's East Mount Airy section. <laughs>
when we talk about somebody that was somehow connected to some of the big timers in the city of Philadelphia, like the West Philadelphia Amin Shamsuddin Ali, the notorious Kabani Savage over in North Philadelphia, Philadelphia street slash music icon, Charlie Mack, alleged former Philadelphia crime boss, Joseph Skinny Joey Merlino, they would all somehow in some way be connected to the person that we're covering today, John Tommy Butterhill Wilson. Yo, yo, what up though? Shades pop a lot. Y'all meet us in Pennsylvania. This is a North Philly story. Now today I'm gonna do my absolute best to try to tell y'all a story about how when you get a label put on you, it's nearly impossible to get off. Now with artists like Meek Mill, Little Uzi Vert, and even guys like PNB Rock, you could almost look at Philly now as a go-to place for hip hop, even though I don't think they hit their full stride. When I really think about it, I think of some of the good battle rappers to come out of the city. And even though the city produced guys like Cool C and Steady B or the Fresh Prince and Jazzy Jeff, groups like Three Times Dope and the Youngsters, who honestly, when I first heard them, I almost thought that they were from New York. It wouldn't be really to the early to mid 2000s to when guys like Benny Siegel would come with the State Property Collective or you would hear people like Major Figures or Cassidy and Eve would really put the world on notice that Philly had talent. And one of those collectives at the time would be a group called Ram Squad or the Richard Allen Mob, named after the notorious housing projects, Richard Allen Homes, that was located in North Philadelphia. And it would be in that group and in those specific housing projects where I would consider Tommy Hill to be a leader. Now, though the group wouldn't reach worldwide notoriety, they would have some regional success with the highlight of the group's career probably being a song titled Ballers, which the remix would end up featuring Sticky Fingers along with Nelly. But if you asked anybody that was in Philadelphia at that time, they would probably tell you the group's talent or ability wouldn't be the reason that they wouldn't make it. But it would be a 2003 drug raid targeting the Ram Squad that would eventually, but pretty much immediately, end any chances of that for the group. Now, Tommy Hill, who grew up on North Philadelphia and would lose his mother at the age of 13 and his father being in and out of his life in jail from the beginning. And despite all of those shortcomings, by the 1990s, Tommy would find himself as not only a somebody in North Philadelphia, but the entire city of Philly. In fact, it would be Tommy's connection to alleged crime boss Joseph Skinny Joey Merlino that would go on to land the group their record deal. According to the Philadelphia Inquirer, Joey Merlino would introduce Tommy to a guy by the name of Stephen Epi Epstein, and the rest would be history for the Ram Squad. And ironically, it seems like the same connection that got them their record deal would end up putting them on the radar to the feds because the FBI would begin to investigate the Ram Squad at the same time it was building a racketeering case against Skinny Joey Merlino. Skinny Joey would end up being arrested in the year of 1999 and convicted in 2001 and would eventually serve a 14-year jail sentence. Multiple members of the Ram Squad would be indicted in the early 2000s, and it would be at that time where snitch allegations would begin to stick to Tommy Butterhill's name. Now, those allegations would arise from a situation that he would find himself in in and around 2004, where he was serving time with a guy that he grew up with who would just happen to be his cellmate, a guy by the name of Benjamin Bellman. In the interview while he was alive, Tommy would explain it was a situation to where the inmates were communicating with each other via the toilet system, and somehow, allegedly, the feds had that toilet system bugged. According to him, some plot was allegedly being planned by his cellmate, Benjamin Bellman, to allegedly have the DA on his case murdered. Benjamin Bellman, along with two other members of his family, Johnny Bellman and Harry Bellman, 
were serving time for a marijuana distribution operation. But during the course of my research, I will find an article titled, Rapper Testifies of Alleged Arsenal. In a recorded interview, Tommy would say he only took the stand in order to differentiate his voice from his cellmate because the feds was trying to tie him into that conspiracy. But according to the Philadelphia Inquirer, they would say that Tommy Hill would explain to jurors that a drug war would have ignited on the 1700 block of North Marshall Street when Benjamin Bellman moved his marijuana cells onto the block, which was already the turf of somebody that was dealing crack. Now, he would also testify that after Benjamin Bellman's brother, Kemba Halim, who was 40 years old at the time, was fatally shot in a house in April of 2003, Benjamin Bellman would tell him that he started to stockpile weapons and planned to use old grenades packed with gunpowder for revenge of his brother's death. And it would be those words in that courtroom that would stick with Tommy Butterhill for life. He would eventually be released after serving two years on that drug case, but it would never be the same for him. Once looked at as being a stand-up dude in the city, echoes of being a rat would follow him. And he would end up getting into it with Beanie Siegel and Oskino from State Property and all of those big players that he seemed to find himself associated with would find their way in the feds. With, like I said, Skinny Joey catching that racketeering case, the West Philly Amin catching a conspiracy case, and Kabani Savage who would catch a drug case that would eventually turn into a death penalty witness intimidation case. Ironically, after Tommy Hill would be released in several years of that snitch label being on him, one of his partners in the group, Ram Squad, a guy by the name of Boy Bax, would come out on video saying how he was the person responsible for putting the people on Tommy Hill. Though he would later come out and say that it was a planned conspiracy of the two where he was trying to get 250000 owed to him, it just seems strange to me that somebody would get on tape and admit that. In December of 2011, Tommy Butterhill would be coming out of an East Mount Airy bar when, according to the police, he would find himself in a robbery situation with three masked men that would end with him being shot and killed. And just as they would speculate during his life, they would also speculate in his death as a robbery attempt is definitely possible. But it will always be that question, was it about something else? Now, if we got anybody from Philly tuned in, I definitely need y'all to get in the comment box and let these people know about how notorious Richard Allen Holmes was. And if y'all remember anything about the Ram Squad, y'all get down there in the comment box and run it up. Y'all make sure y'all hit that red bell and subscribe button right under this video so you know when this real trill spill shit is dropping. Y'all get in the comment box below. Y'all let me know what cities we need to go to, what stories we need to tell, what we missed, what I got wrong, all of that. Tap in directly, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. And until the next slide, y'all know the rules. Shit got popular. Salute the almighty mob.